the definite relationship between speed of the airplane, angle of firing, and deflection resulting at any given range makes possible the design of sights which correct for these factors. One type of such sight is the wind vane front sight. The bead is mounted on hinged arms which permit the bead to move up or down in relation to the gun. These wind vanes hold the bead into the wind. When firing forward and up, the bead moves downward, closer to the barrel. When firing forward and down, the bead and sight line move away from the barrel. When firing to the rear and down, the bead moves in toward the barrel. When firing to the rear and up, the bead moves away from the barrel. The entire sight unit is pivoted, permitting lateral motion of the bead. As the gun is moved away from the flight line, the bead moves away from the barrel and continues pointing into the wind. Thus, when firing forward along the flight line, deflection is zero and line of sight and path of bullet coincide. This is also true when firing to the rear along the flight line. Deflection is zero and path of bullet coincides laterally with the line of sight. When firing in other directions, the front sight heads into the wind, moving the line of sight ahead of the center line of bore. The line of sight intersects the path of the bullet at a predetermined range. The front bead is positioned in the sight the proper distance forward to correct for the full speed of the airplane. The gunner corrects for range and speed of the target on the ring rear sight, which will be considered in more detail later. While there is a considerable variation in force due to movement of the airplane, exerted on bullets fired at various angles from flexible guns, much of this variation is eliminated in the case of fixed machine guns rigidly mounted on the airplane, either in the wing or in a synchronized position. In this position, they fire between the blades of the propeller and the firing is synchronized therewith. All firing is forward. The gun is aimed by aiming the airplane using fixed sights rigidly mounted to keep the airplane on the proper course. The sights are not mounted on the gun, but must be somewhere in front of the pilot, while the gun may be at a distance out in the wing. It is still necessary, however, to consider the gun, the sight, and the airplane as a single unit. No change can be made in their relative positions without affecting the flight line of the bullet. The longitudinal axis of the airplane is a fixed line, marked by the leveling lugs installed in the fuselage. The flight line varies with reference to the longitudinal axis. It depends on the speed, the altitude, and the load. The correct angle between the flight line and the leveling lugs, or any airplane equipped with fixed machine guns, may be obtained from the gun sight chart, prepared by the manufacturer and included in the airplane handbook. For example, this typical gun sight chart shows that at an airspeed of 280 miles per hour at sea level, the flight line will be one and one half degrees above the line parallel with the leveling lug. That is, the nose of the airplane will be one and one half degrees below the line the airplane is actually flying.
At a speed of 150 miles per hour, at the same altitude, the flight line of that airplane will be three degrees below the longitudinal axis, or the line parallel with the leveling lug. It is emphasized that the line of sight must be aligned parallel to the flight line of the airplane and not parallel to the longitudinal axis. If the line of sight and flight line are not accurately parallel, the pilot may get his sights on the target but cannot hold them there. As the airplane approaches the target following the flight line, the line of sight necessarily moves off. In attempting to keep his sights on the target, the pilot makes a dive and zoom approach, which, though shallow and probably imperceptible to onlookers, may change accurate shooting into erratic spraying. Any lateral deviation or angle between line of sight and flight line will cause the sight to move off the target. If the sights are held on the target, it will cause a parabolic approach with resulting inaccuracy of fire. If line of sight and flight line are accurately parallel, the pilot will experience no difficulty keeping the sights on the target. The gun must also be installed at the proper angle to the line of sight to correct for drop of the bullet. In determining this drop for the speed and range at which it is desired to harmonize sights and guns, the speed of the airplane is added to the muzzle velocity of the bullet. This drop being known, the gun is set at such an angle that the trajectory will intersect the sight line at the selected range. At normal ranges, the error in this method is not appreciable, as this angle is very small. If a fixed forward firing gun is fired while the airplane is skidding or slipping, a deflection is introduced, for which its fixed sight will not correct. You must make allowance for such movement and aim at a point adjacent to the target. If the airplane is not flying a true course, but is turning while the gun is firing, a component of initial velocity is introduced, for which the gunner must allow. The sight bar is still in use on some airplanes as a sighting device for a fixed gun. It provides a bead front sight and usually a ring rear sight, the ring sight being used to correct for deflection of moving targets. Accuracy with the sight bar requires that the eye be held steadily in a fixed position, which is often difficult. This disadvantage is overcome by the standard optical sight for fixed guns, which permits movement of the pilot's head without causing sighting errors. It consists of an electric light, an opaque glass with a grid etched on it to permit the passage of light, a reflecting mirror and lens, and a transparent reflector. Light from the lamp passes through the grid and the optical system and is reflected to the eye of the pilot. He sees the image of the grid lines on the transparent reflector, the horizontal lines indicating the position of the target for different ranges. He also sights the target through the transparent reflector and sets the course of the airplane to superimpose it on the image of the grid line. Even though the head is moved with reference to the sight, the target will be superimposed on the image of the grid line when the airplane is in proper position to fire. This is made possible by the lens system, 
which is designed to keep the line from the eye to the grid image parallel to itself, no matter what the position of the eye within limits in which you can see the image. Aiming is affected by flying the plane on a course that centers the target on the desired range line, in this case, 1500. If the range is less than 500 yards, the course of the ship is set to bring the target on the top line. It will be seen that no change in elevation of the gun is necessary, from 180 to 500 yards, if we consider the trajectory of a caliber 30 M1 bullet fired forward from an airplane flying at 200 miles per hour, or 300 feet per second. Assuming the sight to be 30 inches above the gun muzzle, the trajectory at 180 yards is only 3.3 inches below the sight line rising to a maximum height of 3.9 inches above the sight line, it falls again to 3.3 inches below the sight line at 500 yards. At no time between 180 and 500 yards has the trajectory been more than 3.9 inches distant from the sight line. In addition to being able to fire accurately at stationary targets, the aerial gunner must be able to hit targets moving rapidly at all angles. The ring rear sight provides reference points by means of which a definite lead can be held on a moving target but the gunner must estimate the speed, flight path, and range. To assist him in range estimation, the gunner has or can improvise grids or reference points attached to the site. Use of these grids is based on the fact that the apparent size of an object is inversely proportional to the distance from the eye to that object. If an airplane fills the grid at 400 yards, it will fill only half the grid at 800 yards. The grid should be constructed so that the airplane fills the grid at the range at which the gunner has harmonized the sights and the gun. If the target always moved at right angles to the flight line of the gunner, or parallel thereto, he would have definite reference points and could fire with great accuracy. However, the target may cross the field of vision at any angle, speed, and range. The gunner must therefore vary the lead when necessary from that provided by the ring. The proper lead to take depends upon range and angular speed with which the target approaches and crosses the site. In general, the greater the range, the greater the lead to compensate for slowing up of the bullet throughout its course. The greater the estimated speed of the target, the greater the lead. Other things being equal, the lead is greater when the target crosses the sight line at right angles than when crossing obliquely. The foregoing is only a brief description of the principles involved. Propellant force, gravity, 
drift, air resistance, movement of the gun, and movement of the target. Another factor, jump, now being studied, is not included in this film. To acquire proficiency, the aerial gunner must study the effects of the basic forces and movement of the gun and target. He must know his equipment and have ample firing practice under simulated combat conditions. 